It's Monday morning, early in the morning, about 9.30 in the morning. I just got up. Today is a vlog 500, and welcome to my 500th vlog. It's a good one today, boys, I guarantee it. Let's roll that intro. Speaking of rolling that intro, since I've started doing this vlog and stuff, there have been a bunch of intros. Allow me to show you. It's kind of crazy. Roll those intros. Uh. I just come inside for a cigarette and um, <clears throat> it's kind of funny you know I've been doing this for 500 days straight and like uh, like I've been told you know it's uh, definitely a benchmark or not a benchmark but a uh, what is it a I can't remember what to call it but just go with it it's like uh, you know like a hurdle the 500 hurdle the fact that I've been doing it for 500 days has got to mean something obviously I love vlogging I love making videos that's what I do I still remember day one like it was yesterday though like I remember a lot of people wonder or ask me Adam what got you into vlogging well if you've watched this channel since the beginning you would have noticed that uh, my initial videos weren't like these they weren't these here types of videos there are videos where I would sit there for maybe three to four minutes and talk about a topic and then engage the audience in it and mind you sometimes that worked but a lot of people were kind of upset about those see there's all different types of vlogging there is the daily vlogs which is what I do now there is the interactive vlog which is what I did before and you know like for instance uh, what Pug did Pug was a automotive vlogger Dave's an automotive vlogger uh, 13 more death he's a motorcycle vlogger it's so all different types of vlogging you can do you know and I tried doing the interactive vlogging. The audience didn't really care for it. They found it was too fake and kind of annoying. And uh, one of the old, old style videos back. 
like what I did on Skaven. Skaven was pretty raw and uncut. And that's basically what I did, was raw and uncut. And that's when I decided, you know what, let's try and roll off a real life video and see what happens. I rolled off a real life video and everybody loved it. Said keep doing these and that was day one. And then uh, actually I didn't go 500 days straight. Theoretically I went 499 days straight so far. Because if you notice, uh, my first vlog started on a Friday and my second vlog started on a Sunday. The reason behind that was I wanted to see how people would react to it Saturday morning when I got up and I realized a lot of people liked it and I read all the comments and I went okay well I guess that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put up a video once a day and film my day from start to end and go from there and that's what I did. And man did we ever go through a lot of cameras to those times. A lot of people ask me about my camera gear. Here let me show you what I got for camera gear. You're gonna love this. A lot of people ask me Adam, how many cameras do you actually own? Well, let me show you all the gear I use for YouTubing. And uh, you're probably going to think I'm crazy. Well, there's a quick shot of all my video cameras. There's a friggin' ton of them, eh? There's 14 of them there. Two that I haven't put in because they're broken. But here, we'll go through them and I'll show you what we did. So here's the Kodak PlaySport ZE or ZX3, sorry. From the first vlog all the way up till around March, this is what I've been using, and it did a pretty good job. And then I got the flip on my birthday, March 15th, 2010, and uh, it was a pretty reliable camera. It was really good, but um, I didn't like the fact that it only had a 60-minute run timer. So later that month, I went on eBay and I bought four flips. Um, Two of these black ones, a pink one, and a white one, and a, um, it came with a Kobe Snap, which I ended up giving to Breed and Antler Mike. So, we used the two black ones to build one, and we ended up using this for a long time on the vlogs. This here is actually my first ever pocket camera, the Kodak ZI6, and it did a great job at the time. It's not a bad little camera, the 720p, it's alright. Then moving over here to the Sony Bloggy. This one here showed up in the mail recently. Not sure where it came from, who sent it and whatnot, but this one showed up in the mail and I used it for a couple blogs and it worked out pretty well. This one here is the Sanyo Zacti. This one here the girlfriend actually bought me for my birthday before I got the white flip. Um, mainly because the ZX3 was having audio problems and video problems and it was messing up big time and causing a lot of trouble. So she got me this camera and I used this here for uh, quite a while until the white flip showed up and then I switched it over to the white flip. The ZX5 PlaySport, I picked that one up recently from Staples for 60 bucks when it went on sale. And it does pretty good but the audio is kind of, kind of, kind of butchered on it, but whatevs. Not a bad camera. Then over here we have the ZI10 by Kodak. Basically the successor to the ZI8, has a microphone port, pretty decent lens, great audio pickup on the microphone, but it does have its own, its own quirks that I kind of get annoyed by, so I haven't really used it too much. Then up here we have my one of my camcorders, the Panasonic TM80. Love this thing to death, it's really compact compared to my other Panasonic, which you'll see in a second, and it did a really good job of uh, vlogging. Used it for a long time. Has great audio pickup. Only problem is, is it's a little bit bulky to be carrying around in your pocket. But not as bulky as the big SD20 here. This guy here is my flagship camcorder. It'll do 1080p at 24 megs per second. A really nice quality. Uh, it's got the wide angle lens attachment. The six hour battery on the back. Does a great job. Then we have the Sanyo Zacti CG10 which is a 720p gun pistol grip camcorder and it does a pretty good job you know for 720p and all that and it runs on the same batteries as the Sanyo VPC PD2 which is kinda nice next up is the Kodak that, that I recently got the Kodak ZE1 Playful this is the one that I've been using lately for the vlogs and it does a real good job and um, yeah I'm really impressed with this one I don't understand why these two here don't share the same mic as this guy here because this one here, the audio sounds a lot better than these two here stock. So, not too sure. And this is an older Canon camera. Canon camcorder, I should say. It's the FS200. Shoots the standard definition. However, I have done videos in the past with it. Rendered it at 720p and nobody knew the difference. This thing's packing the Dig Digic 2 processor. And it does a real good job of video recording, I have to say. Plus it has a mic input on it, so you can use it. <coughs> in the field with a microphone to give it better audio if you don't like the quality from the front firing mics. My GoPro Hero. It's not the Hero 2, just the Hero. 
but I got it real cheap and I've used it in a couple of vlogs here and there. You've seen the road, the drive videos. It was pretty decent. And we can't forget, last but not least, the Canon ELPH300HS, which was classified as the vlogger's camera of 2011. Got this baby on sale for uh, 189 and it did a great job for a long time. Only downside was 10 minute recording and the fact that the audio sounded like you're talking into a beer can. But other than that, it was a real good camera. I really liked it. So obviously you're wondering, well Adam, you just showed us all your cameras. What the hell camera are you filming with? I'm actually filming with my iPhone 4 right now because I didn't know what to use and I thought, what the hell, I'll use the iPhone 4. So theoretically you could add that to the arsenal as well as another camera that I have that I can use, the iPhone 4, even though the quality is not as good as the rest of the camcorders, but in a pinch, it'll do the job. Right on. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you have any questions about these cameras, just uh, let me know in the comments and let's get back to the vlog, people. Quite the load of cameras, eh? Sure do have a lot of them. And uh, it's kind of an, an addiction now. I see a new camera come out with new technology and it's like, I, I gotta own that. I must own that. I have to own that. And uh, it's kind of brutal, but it's the way she goes. And uh, yeah. And you guys seen many different weather changes around here, you know, spring, summer, fall, winter. It happens. It happens for the, oh, freaking comes that wind. But it happens and it's the way she goes. But uh, that's the life of the northern, northern Canada, or central Canada anyway. I don't think we classify it as northern anymore. But um, yeah, it's the way she goes. It's pretty crazy. Well, I gotta run out and get some dog food and some cat food because Oreo's out and so is Felix. If you guys remember, vlog one, day one, that's exactly what I did. I went out and got dog and cat food. So, I'm gonna jump on the Trans Am here, hammer down. Alright, let's go get food. Yeah, a lot of people ask me questions about this car. Like when I got it and stuff, and how long I've had it, and well, I bought this car back in 2002, and I believe I made a video on my Skaven channel about the history of this car. So, what I'll do for you is I'll play that video now, and then we'll come back to this. So go ahead and watch that video, and then we'll come back to this. A lot of you have been requesting information on my Trans Am. I decided that I'd make a video about the history of the car, just so you guys get the lowdown on it. Now I bought the car back in 2005. It had 135,000 kilometers on the 305 throttle body injected engine. Uh, at the time, it was a friend of my brother's selling it. She was asking $7,000 on Auto Trader. My brother went over and saw the car and told her that I was looking for a sports car, something I can rock in the summer. So she said, well, tell you what, if your brother buys it, I'll give him the car for 3,500 bucks. What my brother didn't realize was I was looking for this exact car. I spent about three years looking for a Pontiac Trans Am or Firebird with a V8 engine and a decent body, something I could play with. Well, all the cars I came across, the ones that had decent bodies, either had a 2.8 liter V6 or a 2.5 liter inline four. All the ones that had the V8 engine had holes in the floors, the strut towers were shot, the cars ran like crap, you know. And then I came across this guy. So 2005 was the year I bought it. I've owned it for five years now. First year I bought it, I didn't do anything to it. I just drove the car. It had these Canadian tire boom pipes on the back, which sounded like garbage. And it had no stereo inside, just an AM FM cassette tape player. It came with these rims, the WS6 rims, but it also has the WS6 suspension kit. I haven't done anything to the body. It's always looked like this. It wasn't until later on that year, I should say the following year, that I decided I needed a new exhaust system. So I went over to a place in North Bay called Security Muffler, talked to a buddy there, and he uh, hooked me up with this Magnaflow system, which was really nice. And then after that was done, I realized I still need more power. So what I did, I'll show you here, I went out on eBay and bought some Camaro headers. Had them installed. 
and I still wanted more juice out of the car, I was told to get an open air element breather. I put that in. The car still wasn't where I wanted it to be, and then I was on this website called thirdgen.org where they were teaching people how to burn their own chips for their cars. So I got into data logging and burning my own processor. So I ended up putting a custom ROM into the car, which gets me really decent fuel mileage. Uh, I can go for about 520 kilometers on a tank in this car in town, just bombing around. Really decent. Custom tuned by me. What you're looking at is a 305 throttle body injected V8 engine. Now, those chrome head covers or valve covers, they came with the car. Personally, I don't like them. I basically redneck engineered the oil cap to stay on. I had to put a tie down system. So that's pretty much all there is under there. Now, as for the inside of the car, I'll show you guys here. I put some uh, some custom pedals in it because the, when I originally got the car, there was just this metal plate. There was no rubber covering the pedal, so I bought I got those from an old from my old Tempo, and I just threw them on there. On my steering wheel, the original steering wheel that came with it was really chewed up, so I put this Garrett Racing one on, or I'm not sure what which one this was. I think it was a Sparco. And I love transformers, so I just stuck a transformer sticker on the horn button. Pretty sweet. For my stereo, I'm running a Kenwood deck to get rid of that old performance sound. You gotta love that, right? It was a tape deck. But a performance sound system, I went and put the uh, Kenwood deck in it. Um, because I don't have a battery in the car, I can't show you the subwoofer system in the back. Well, let's see what kind of magic I can work here. There's a rack up top there. I need the battery to pop the trunk, unfortunately. But back there, I got a 2500 watt Soundstream amp with a 2600 watt Soundstream 12 inch sub. For my speaker systems, it's these stupid 4x6s all around. You got one on each uh, B pillar, and you got one on underneath the dash mat on each side here and here. It does sound pretty good, don't get me wrong. It's not quite the sound I'm looking for, but whatever, it does the job. So that's basically the car as it sat in 2007. In early 2008, I started having problems with the transmission. Basically what was happening was you'd put the car in gear, hit the gas, you wouldn't go anywhere. The engine would rev, you wouldn't hook, then all of a sudden she would hook. It was slipping. For an automatic transmission, that's a major problem. So I brought the car into the tranny shop, find out what the problem was, and they had to pull the transmission and tear it down. And they said a bunch of the motor, a bunch of the planetary gear sets were fried, and the uh, torque converter was wrecked and all that. And I said, well, how much to rebuild my transmission? They quoted me $2,000. I said, well, how much to rebuild it with an upgraded kit? They quoted me $2,000. So I said, you know what? Screw it. I want my transmission built. I want it built with a uh, with a stage two shift kit. Actually, originally I said just a shift kit, but my buddy Mitch works there. He calls me up and goes, couldn't get a hold of me. I was at work, and he said, What do you want? A stage one or a stage two shift kit? Give me a call back and let me know. I never got back to him in time. So he just said, Screw it. You're getting the stage two. Threw the stage two into her, and it's been pretty sweet. So now the car shifts really hard. Uh, you can hold it in gears forever and basically walk this thing right into the six grand red line. All I need now is a better power plant. That 305 just doesn't cut it anymore. I think it's time that I swap that out. Unfortunately, last year, well last year I used the car a bit. I drove around with it. We had an issue last year where the, um, the radiator exploded. Well, initially it started with a coolant leak at the, I think it was the return for the radiator. So I replaced that hose. Then I had a leak at the thermostat housing. So I replaced that hose and that and the housing because the housing itself was cracked. And sure enough, after I replaced those two, the radiator explodes. So I had to drop a new rad core into it. So the cooling system's all up to date and brand new. Uh, that was the only problem I had with it last year. And well, now, as you guys all know this year, my biggest problem is the headlight motor. Now my buddy Chuck, unfortunately, was unable to reassemble the headlight motor. He had a hell of a time trying to drill out the old screws, so I guess I'm on the hunt for a new headlight motor for my car. But other than that, the car runs mint. I just need the headlight motor so I can at least manually put it back, up, uh, put the headlight up and down when I go for a drive. But yeah, other than that, the car has been really great. Real fun car to drive. The 305 uh, throttle body injection only puts out 170 horse at the flywheel, but with my chip modifications, I've uh, done a dyno with a G-Tech. Now, originally the G-Tech said when the car was stock that I was putting out 129 horse to the pavement because it just does a, an acceleration versus weight of the car over a certain time period and somehow it gets your horsepower. It's at about 129.3 or something like that at the time. 
After I did the headers, the exhaust system, the intake, the custom chip, the car was putting down 152 to the pavement. I guess that's okay, that's not too bad. Actually, that was pre-chip. After the chip, I was sitting at 166, so I was getting more close to the stock flywheel speeds. Now, with the new transmission, I still haven't G-Tech'd it. I don't know if it's going to give me more juice. Theoretically, it should, because now it hooks up like no other. That's pretty much uh, all I've done to this car. That's pretty much the entire update on it. Put a better stereo into it, put some aftermarket bolt-ons, and that's about it. Other than that, I've just been driving it. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them. And, uh, yeah, guys, take care. So there you go. Now you understand the history behind this car. I made that video a while back on the Skaven channel. That was my first channel. I started that channel actually in 2000 and I think it was 2007. I'll have to check the Skaven account. But I started it a long time ago just so I could subscribe to people because I was unaware of the whole subscribing to people thing and all that. Oh, uh, we might have a problem up here. But, uh, yeah, I created the Skaven channel. To be honest with you, to subscribe to David's Farm. That's why I made the Skaven channel. And that name was just made by me for funsies. Uh, that was my username on a lot of video games and stuff. So that's why I used that name. A lot of people ask me that. Adam, what does Skaven mean? Well, it's kind of a ripoff of a race from Warhammer. The Skaven race, but they don't spell it the same way. I spell mine differently. I put the A-E-N in there. So yeah, I, I kind of did a little bit of a, a difference on it. And uh, I used that account. My actual first video ever uploaded, though, was Oreo and the Hose. And I believe that was in 2009. And the video was, um, yeah, it was pretty raw, uncut. You know, it was just us spraying a hose. And, well, it started off with us wanting to, uh, we wanted to water something. Or the girlfriend wanted to water something. And when she fired the hose for a test, Oreo went after the stream. And she went, what? Normally dogs are scared of that. So, sure enough, she starts spraying around and Oreo's chasing it. So she calls me out to come and look. She says, bring your camera. So I grabbed the video camera and came outside. And I'm like, what? And then she starts... <laughs> Dude, you look like a drowned rat. Oreo. Oreo. Doing it, and I was like, oh, I gotta tape this. This is funny. And I didn't know what to do with it when I was done taping it. And she goes, Well, don't you have a YouTube channel that you subscribe to people with? I'm like, Yeah. She's like, ah, Put the video up there and see what happens. So I put that video up. You know, and then when uh, I started watching David's farm and stuff, he mentioned uh, about making videos and it's not that hard and stuff. And I was looking at his videos and I'm like, holy shit, I can't do this kind of stuff. I am not mechanically inclined. I'm a computer guy. And, you know, working on computers, who the hell wants to see you swap out video cards and RAM chips? Like, that's not really all that exciting. You know, here's this guy building these crazy inventions, like, redneck roller coasters and all this crap so I'm like well frig what, what can I do and I didn't know what to do and then uh, somebody on there shows up by the name of redneck Reckham shows up on the channel and I realized what his videos were 
yeah, he's mechanically inclined and stuff, but he would just basically videotape what he was doing during the day. I was like, well, that's kind of cool. I like that. And then Crazy British Bloke showed up on the scene through a Wreckham video. And I was like, oh, oh, this guy's doing the same thing. Well, shit, I can do this. Why don't I do this? And that's when I started doing the, the Skaven channel, where if I made, like, a crazy kooky invention out of, like, uh, you know, like a light for my camera or or a way to mount my, uh, oh, freaking Tennessee plates, nice, uh, or a way to uh, mount my uh, cameras to the car. I'd make videos like that and show how it was done and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, that's basically what started the Skaven channel. Odd videos here and there of doing random shit. Well, I freaking hope this pet store is open. They've been closed for a while. They were doing some uh, some bullshit. Oh, the snap-on truck, people. The snap-on truck. All right, we'll park here, and we'll head her inside. And I'll talk to you guys uh, in a bit. Uh, we gotta get Goggy some food and Kitty some food. So let's go get them food. You see, last year we went all the way over there to Global Pet Foods. Well, that's where we used to go. Now we go right here to Pet Value because it's a hell of a lot cheaper and Oreo likes this food better. So that works out awesome. So let's go grab Oreo some food, Felix some food, and then we'll head her home. Alrighty, well, we got Oreo's food, but Felix's food, they don't carry it here. They used to, but they quit, so that sucks. So, it's time to roll out to Walmart, get Felix's food. Um, we got plenty of time left. I also want to check the P.O. box, you know, just in case there's some things in there. So we gotta go to the mall for that anyway, so frig it, we'll go to the mall, get Felix's food, we'll check the P.O. box, and then uh, head her back home. Should be good. Should be good. Yeah, I was in bed last night at 10.30. 10 frickin' 30, like I was done editing the vlog, I let it render and upload. The moment uh, I sent the vlog to the upload, I was like, yeah, it's friggin' bedtime. Not even gonna wait for it. Took two gravels and went to bed. Cause my stomach was just beating the shit out of me. I called her quits. Passed out, woke up at nine o'clock this morning and started the day. So I get a lot of messages daily asked or people telling me they're going to start vlogging. They want to do what I do basically with the vlog. And the only thing I have to say is get ready because it's a long road. It's a bitch to get subscribers. Like I lucked out. Skaven was already established and I kind of gave myself a shout out. That's why I blew up in subs right away. You know I mentioned that I'm going to do this and people went okay and they jumped on board. but. If you're just starting off and you have no no subscribers, don't give up if they don't show up. Just keep on giving her. If it's something you enjoy doing, you'll keep giving her, even if you only have like four subscribers. Like look at my friend Evelyn Gonzalez. She started off and she was getting like four or five views a video, but she wasn't doing it for anything else but for the fun of doing it. And now she's like way up there. Like she's not high in, I'm not way up there in subs, I mean way up there in videos. She keeps doing it every day. And unlike me guys, you don't need to make videos that are like 34 minutes long. You know, if you make a, like look at Evelyn's videos once again. Her average video length is maybe six minutes. And she covers everything she needs to in a day. So, that might be the way you guys might want to go. Maybe just cover the important stuff. Keep the videos not too long, not too short but just cover the uh, the requirements and give her, you know? Don't have to make some epic saga like I do. 
You just have to uh, do what you want to do. Have fun doing it. Don't think about YouTube paying you or anything like that. Oh, I want to pull right here. Beauty. Almost smashed into that girl. If you remember that YouTube is for having fun, then you'll have fun doing it and that's all that matters. But anyway guys, I'm at the post office. So I'm going to hit up the post office and then hit up Walmart and we'll go from there. So let's head her out. Alrighty, well, we got stuff in the P.O. box, so that's kind of cool. Sir. And uh, I'm going to bring this back to the car and then we'll relocate the car over to Walmart. Go get Felix's food and we'll go home and shoot a mail day. Why not? So. That should be uh, rather interesting. Yeah. Yes, got some pretty big stuff too in here. That's my mail. Yay. <laughs> I was nervous about doing that. I didn't think anybody would send me stuff. All I really wanted was letters, but whatevs. Have to see what we get. This one package says do not bend, so right on. So apparently the P.O. box can take packages. People were asking me questions about that. Yes, it can. Any hoozle, I'm gonna head her off to uh, Walmart now get Felix his food and then we'll head her home so let's hammer down Alrighty, we're at Walmart now and uh, we'll go ahead and get the cat food let's do this all right let's uh, transform and roll out what the fuck move idiots all right let's head home we got Felix's food got Oreo's food we got the mail. I think we're good. So we can go home and uh, carry on with the vlog. Carry on with the vlog. Carry on with the vlog. Oh, I hate coming to the mall during the day because it's so freaking busy. But uh, yeah, we'll go home. We'll do uh, do this mail, find out what it is, and go from there. Should be pretty awesome. Freaking happy. Super freaking happy that I got mail. Yeah, Walmart was hectic as all hell today and people everywhere. Still kind of shocked to believe that I've been doing this for 500 days. Like, holy shit. That's unbelievable. That's kick ass. And other things. Oh, well, looks like gas went down again. 123.9. Right on. Right on. I dig it. Alright, well, I'm almost home, so I'll talk to you guys once we're in the office again. Peace out. Alrighty, guys, I'm home now, and we're gonna go through this mail and see what we got. So let's have at her. Should be pretty good. So. The first one is a letter, and there's the address there from a D. Faulkner. So we'll see what this is. All right, the letter starts. Just wanted to write you a letter from a big, big fan to say thanks for the awesome videos. I watch them every day and enjoy getting my daily dose of vlogging life. I also enjoy seeing what life is like in Canada compared to the States. Keep up the good work and keep on vlogging. Yeah, that's my catchphrase. And it's from Dave11686 on the YouTube and there is his address. Okay, yeah, that'll be in the description. Don't worry, bud. <laughs> right on, friggin' letter, sweet. So there you go, Dave11686, yeah, I see him commenting on every video, so that's right on. Freaking yeah. Alright, next up is a package that I'm not sure who it's from, there's no return address. It just has my address on it, so let's take a look and see. Okay, so this letter here reads, hey Adam, I first seen you from the Skaven videos. Your videos are well made and informative. I don't know how you have the energy to tape and edit the vlogs every day. You are dedicated. You are dedicated for sure. Thanks for all the great entertainment, and thanks again for not charging a dime for them. Hope you make it big someday. Cheers from Mr. Meow J. Meow J W. Sorry, Meow J W. Right on. So see back. This enclosed as a case for your iPhone in case you get tired of your Defender case. Well, let's take a look at that case for the iPhone. Well, that's pretty sweet. Just a rubberized case. Slap the iPhone in there, and it makes it a lot, uh, a lot nicer. That's for sure. 
Sweet. Have to try that out. Awesome. Thanks, dude. That's Meow J on the YouTubes. I wish this camera had macro, but it doesn't. Right on. Right on. And then we get this one here, this really big package that says, do not bend. Luckily they listened. This would have came any other way. It probably would have been bent to shit. Royal A Mail. A Royal Mail. Huh. From the UK. Holy crap. All right, let's crack this open and see what it is. Okay, so there's a letter in there. And the letter reads, hi, just some mags and stuff to look at from the UK. I would like to say thanks. Look forward to seeing the normal people doing their thing. I have no need for a shout out as there's nothing on my channel as of yet. Uh, I will ask when I have more content on. I've been fighting cancer. Oh, that sucks. So I've been off work. Look forward to see your YouTube posts. Keep up the good work. Steve, thanks for commenting to comments. Keep on vlogging. 944 Steph, I am using. Okay, so that's his, his YouTube name, 944 Steph. Not asking for a shout out, but uh, you know, that's part of the rules. Uh, I said that if anybody sends me a letter, I give him a shout out. That friggin' sucks that you're fighting cancer, bud. Uh, hopefully you win this battle, because uh, cancer friggin' sucks big time. So keep on fighting the good fight and, uh, you know, stay upright and stuff because uh, you got to win this. Well, let's crack into the package and see what kind of uh, car mags we got. Right on, we got an Auto Trader UK edition here with uh, all the cars that are available in the UK. This will be fun to look through to see what they have over there. I know Angry Joe's going to want to borrow this off me because he loves the UK cars. Next, we have a Pontiac 1988 friggin' road cars. This is going to be awesome to look through, for sure. Oh, wait a second. Did I just see... Oh, there's my car. <laughs> that is awesome. Freak yeah. First page I turned to, eh? Oh, this is going to be awesome to read through. For sure. Got a Pontiac SSE. Yeah, the Bonneville. Nice. My buddy used to have one of those supercharged the Grand Prix frig yeah those were quick little cars right on that's that's still friggin makes me laugh that looks awesome Trans Am all done up race car like frig yeah oh the Fiero right on Uh, the Grand Am. Oh, the Le Mans. Pontiac Le Mans. My neighbor had one of these. He used to call it the Pontiac Lemon. This is awesome. I'm going to have to definitely read through this one. The Private Eye. Salem Witch Trial. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, this will be interesting to read through. Wow, lots of reading to be done on this, that's for sure. Bunch of little short articles and stuff. Sweet. Oh, and this one here, Rex is going to want. UK 4x4 Off-Road. For sure, Rex is going to want to read through this one. I can tell you right now. Bunch of performance parts and different trucks and things and right on cool well thanks Steph that's awesome um, got to read through these magazines for sure that, that Pontiac one's gonna be definitely read through and I know Rex is gonna bug me for the 4x4 one and I'm pretty sure Angry Joe's gonna want to borrow the Auto Trader to read during poopy times so right on well thanks everybody who sent me a letter that's freaking awesome uh, that was 944 Steph Meow JW and Dave I can never remember the numbers after your name Dave 11686 so thanks a lot guys I appreciate it big times go check out their channels guys I know Steph said he didn't want to shout out but what the frig he's getting one it's the way we go so right on freaking awesome freaking awesome Oh, well, it's starting to piss a little bit. Did I? Yeah. Stupid me. Left my keys in the ignition. Good thing I didn't lock the door. But a lot of people ask me daily about uh, how do I mount my cameras in the car. Well, in this car, I fabricated this thing here from a dollar store tripod, but as you can tell, it broke. So I'm going to try and fix this up, and that'll be a later video. But for the time being, I've been using these Deal Extreme mounts. 
and they actually work pretty damn good. Pretty damn good indeed. You can see the video on the tech channel for those. Now in my other car, my Pontiac G6, which I have no idea if it has any power left. Yes it does. I'm gonna fire it up just to let it run for a bit. We'll see if she will fire up. Just let it run for a bit. I have this mount here. This mount here was actually made from an XM radio mount. Now, a couple Christmases ago, the girlfriend bought me an XM radio for my car, obviously, and I used it for a good solid year, but then the backlit display blew on it. Well, I wanted to send it back to uh, back to Future Shop to get it replaced or repaired, and the way they do it there is they give you, uh, a, a, basically you mail it off and then they mail you back a gift card for the amount value. So, they ended up mailing me back a $100 gift card and I decided I didn't feel like paying $12.95 a month for the Sirius satellite. And, you know, because I don't know if about you guys, but if you have Sirius or XM, I find it plays the same three songs over and over and over again, like nonstop. It's like a Ford Top 40 playlist and that's all you do. So, I decided, you know what, frigate, I'm going to get rid of this, use the money elsewhere. I think I bought a camera with it, probably, as you saw my camera collection. And uh, I still had this thing Mac tacked to the dash. And I was like, well, what can I do with this? And I realized there was a hole in the top. Just got an interesting idea for a tri pod mount for the car. Basically I was in the garage digging around and I found this quarter inch bolt which will screw into the bottom of a camera's tripod mount. Let me show you. So here we got my Canon camera, that bolt, and it screws in there perfectly, offering full stability. It doesn't lock well, but I'm sure we can figure a way how to get that to work. But yeah, this will work. I'm going to show you what I got planned for the car. Let's uh, take the show outside. Basically, my big idea is to mount a camera mount in the car so I can have a camera facing me and I can talk while I drive. Because sometimes I, I have funny conversations when I drive and it'd be kind of funny if you guys could hear some of the stuff that gets said in the car. Well, I'm going to show you my plan here and hope the lens doesn't get too wet. I'll show you what the plan is here. Basically, you see that out there that's for the old XM radio if you look on top there's a bit of a hole now this thing swivels and moves around so what my plan was was to run the bolt in there like that so if I chop the head off here it should be able to sit right in there and then be good to go so I'm gonna try that out see what happens yeah sounds like a good plan Alrighty, so safety first got my glasses on gonna grab this thing hold it with a pair of vice grips got my Dremel Clean, cut, done. Don't worry, my safety glasses. Forgot to take them off. Whoops. But basically, that's what we're looking at. Now it's just sitting in there, but it sits in there pretty good. So, not sure how else I could lock it in place. I don't think it'll really move. Let's give it a test run here. It basically sit like that, and you can wiggle this around to move it. Maybe I should cut some more off of it. Yeah, I still got some playing around to do, but you get the idea, right? So I'd be aimed like that at my face. I'd be driving along. You can see me driving, I can be talking to you, you know, turn off the radio so YouTube doesn't freak out. It's an idea, and I can always mount a camera here, aimed out the window, so as I'm vlogging over here, I can still do it like a 23 second super time lapse chat. Nah, just a thought. I realized the hole fit a quarter inch bolt. So, I busted out my JB Weld, and I welded the, uh, the bolt right to the mount. And what this gives me is the ability to swivel and turn so you can basically position your camera wherever you want and it actually makes a nice stiff hold now the other options i don't know if i have them in here yes i do way 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 back in the day before i even started uh like when i first started vlogging i built these for my car now this is the same dollar store tripod head with the screw to mount your camera and a clip so you can just go up to your visor you know and, and clamp it to your visor and you're good to go. So now you got it on your visor and you got your camera mounted. I gotta fix this one here, it's pretty broken, but uh, you get the gist of it. And then once you have your camera mounted, you tighten up this here said bolt, and if this one here wasn't so broken, this would be tight. But that's the general concept of my, my mounts. Basically, in general, you can build a mount out of anything. You can make a suction cup with a uh, quarter inch screw. Uh, yeah, quarter inch screw, that's all it is. Quarter inch threaded hey screw. Hey guys, Adam here. 
I showed earlier in a video that I bought one of these suction cup things from the uh, hardware store. My plan for this is to adapt it to one of these dollar store tripods, one of these guys, to basically mount it on so I can have an in-car cam. I've gone ahead and I pulled the tripod part off. I'm going to remove this bolt here because I don't really need it. My big concern though is I'm not going to have much space between the suction cup and the actual tripod mount. Basically the camera I'd be using with this mount is my old Samsung C10. Not a bad little camera. Standard definition. 720 by 480 widescreen. Really small, really light. Got the tripod on there. It would sit on the suction cup like that and then stick to my window. So only concern, only problem I'm going to have right now is figuring out how I'm going to mount this suction cup on there because sure there's a bolt hole in the bottom there and a bolt hole in the bottom there but they're both not the same thread so I don't know exactly how I'm going to pull this off. What I was thinking about doing was if you see I already marked the perimeter of the inner diameter of this. What I was going to do is grind this away with a knife if I just chew it up, put some super glue onto her and tack that on and see if it holds. If not, I'll engineer another way. That's the joys of being an engineer, a redneck engineer. So I'm gonna get started on that now and show you guys what I come up with. By the way, this suction cup was one dollar. It's on sale right now. Normally they're two bucks, they're fifty percent off. The guy said it can carry about fifteen pounds. So in all theory, I could carry the camera I'm using now, my Panasonic, but I love this camera and I don't want it to fall and break again. You know, I already crashed and what I, I hit a tree with this camera. Um, uh, let me see what else. It fell off Bloke's mount and hit the ground, and it's still running, so give it some cred, right? Panasonic builds tough stuff. But this guy here is nice and light, and I can also run my Kodak ZI6 on this mount as well, which would work out pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and get crafting on this, and I'll show you guys the product as I go. So I went ahead, and I didn't really attach it on there well. It's just kind of sitting on there. I chewed up the end a bit with my Deal Extreme pocket knife. By the way, Rickham, thanks for finding this for me, buddy. Redneck Rickham found this in the field at uh, from the time before when I went to uh, Dave's farm when I wiped out on the motorbike sure enough I lost my knife Rick was nice enough to go hunt it down for me and he found it and that's what I used to chew up the end on this yeah it's kind of rough once I got this guy on here it'll look uh, look pretty decent eh so what I'm gonna use to attach it is some of the stickiest stuff in the world probably stickier but this stuff is pretty sticky good old super glue I'm just going to surround the perimeter here. I'll give it a better angle so you guys can see this. So all I'm going to do is just dab some super glue onto her. Except for this super glue is dried up and no good anymore. Okay, let's try this guy out. Oh yeah. Just goober on there. Try not to get any of this crap on your hands, guys. Because once it gets on your hands, it never comes off. And then I'm just going to dab that on there. Completely miss. Son of a bitch. All right, more super glue. Mmm, this stuff smells pretty. That was sarcasm, guys. This stuff actually stinks like shit. And I'm making a mess, but no big deal. And just put that on there like that. And wait for it to dry. And see if she sticks. So we'll give that about 5-10 minutes and see what happens there. And I'll keep you guys updated. Product is complete. Basically, this is what we're looking at. Now, with the Samsung here, the Samsung C10. You just screw her on and that's all there is to it. I should be able to bolt that to my window with the suction there. My only concern is will I be able to aim it at myself as I'm not sure how well I can show this to you guys but these here camera mounts they have this this lip here which allows you to lift it up so I guess if it was directly mounted on the dash I could set it upright and put anything on it but to the window I have to keep it here. I'll figure something out with this. I'll, I'll give it a try in the car there and see how well it works. I'll do a video of a, uh, a trial on that but that was really cheap to make by the way guys dollar plunger dollar uh, tripod mount two bucks some super glue you're off to the races probably could have bolted it in there seeing how both holes are there all I had to do was modify the bolt it came with and attach a smaller thread to the top and I could have had them both joined there and then super glued that to make sure the weld was complete but I kind of like this idea better that only took me a quarter of a James ready and the project was done something else I want to add to this video <coughs> been getting those beer caps for the guys at the farm the ones with the dates on them James Reddy is doing this contest right now I don't know if it's a contest or just a fun filled game where they give you this calendar 369 days on it and you got to get beer caps and glue them to the calendar I got the calendar but I figured instead of filling mine up first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring them all to the farm and let them fill theirs up. I got about 10 caps for the guys, so I got about 12 more beer downstairs. So we'll see how many caps I got for them, and when I go down for my long weekend in August, I'll bring them with me. Alright guys, so that's my build for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. 
I'll uh, try and get a video of it in action tomorrow when it's sunny out. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. Alright guys, take her easy and if she's really easy, take her twice. Or bolt. Yeah, bolt. And that's all you really need to make it work. So right now I'm just charging up the battery in the uh, G6 because I haven't driven this thing since I put the Trans Am on the road. Figured I'd run it and let the fluids roll through, you know. Doesn't sound as good as the, as the uh, Trans Am, but uh, whatevs. That should be good enough. Now I've done a bunch of those types of uh, types of mounts and other things like, for instance, this, this video here from the Skaven channel. I show you how to make a custom light. Hey guys, um, I've decided to build a light for my camera, my C10. And what I'm going to use is the following parts. I'm going to show you here. Basically, I found a uh, little light here over at uh, the dollar store. It has, I think it's about 24 LEDs in it. And uh, it's pretty bright. It does a pretty good job. But as you can tell in the back here, the only mount was some old hook that I removed. And a, um, a magnet mount. So my plan is is to take this bolt which threads perfectly into the bottom end of my camera and I'm going to hot glue it in here like so which will thread to the tripod mount on the bottom of my camera so I'm going to go ahead what I got to do though I don't know how well you can see that but I got to try and I've already started but I got to chew that out so the bolt head can fit in there and lock it in place and then I'm going to start with the hot gluing and to turn it on, there's a button on the bottom here. So when it's on the camera, I'll just be able to sit there and click it, and it'll throw plenty of light. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand that down so it's all scuffed and rough, and uh, hopefully I don't get a projected uh, light dot. But as you can tell, that really lights up the room with just that light. See, on, off. So that's my plan, so I'm going to go ahead and start doing the, uh, the boring on this and then I'll show you uh, what it looks like before I mount the bolt. Alrighty guys, I'm just going to turn down my TV here. And uh, there you have it, I bored it all out. So basically what's going to happen is this bolt here is going to sit right in here, like so. I'm going to hot glue it into place with my brand new state-of-the-art Zellers brand glue gun. I'll move some of this garbage out of the way here. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna hot glue that in there. I took apart the light so you can tell it's just a battery operated uh, simple, very simple light. Um, gonna hot glue it in there. That bolt there will just screw directly into the bottom of my camera and uh, we'll be in business. While I'm doing this, I'm also formatting an old, really old computer for a friend. And it's running Windows XP. I got it on my KVM on my main screen. And it's not the greatest machine, but it does the job. So this is keeping me busy while I'm waiting for this thing to be done. Installing drivers and stuff. So yeah, let's pitter-patter and get at her. Okay, guys. Um, here we have it, the uh, the new light. It cost me a buck for this thing at the dollar store, this light. This bolt was about 60 cents, and the hot glue, well, that's cheap enough, right? So there you have it. I hot glued the crap out of the back end. It looks kind of ghetto, but a light like this from, say, Future Shop, that bolts onto the bottom camera port, you're looking about 35 bucks. I built this one here for about 3 bucks and it does a real good job once it's attached to the camera I'll have to uh, show you that there with a different camera obviously and uh, yeah so there you have it the uh, three dollar camera light and it works really good so I'll go ahead and hook this up to my camera I'll get my other camera on the tripod and I'll show you how she works alrighty guys I'm gonna use the old C or the old uh, MX20 for my demonstration here basically this light just screws into this port on the bottom here so you just go ahead and screw that on and uh, only problem with this light is once it's attached you can uh, no longer use your tripod but uh, basically you just get her straight 
tighten the nut right here, that little nut I installed. It'll tighten her up, and that's what you end up with. So you go ahead and you open up your camera, kick on the power, and when you turn on the light, hey, you can't see me anymore. Look at that. Super brightness. And I don't know if you can see the screen on that, but without the light, that's ah, not too bad. Let me see here. And then with the light on, it really brightens things up for you. It's hard to tell on here, but let me tell you, it makes this camera worth a lot more. Because the problem with these little cameras is always low light filming. They do not like to do it. So you got to come up with genius creative ways to get more light into the area. Either you use a, um, a shop light or some sort of a three point light setup. But for cheap travel light, this guy will do the job for me. So there you have it, three bucks, make a cheap light for your camera, portable, runs off AAA batteries, which can get pricey, but if you find a good place, you can pick them up for dirt cheap, and uh, hey, what can I say, I got me a light for my camera now, so I can do some decent outdoor videoing. Alright, so if you have any other questions, leave a post in the comments, and I'll be sure to answer them. Alright guys. You know, Take care. And on this next video, I did the same thing but with infrareds and I made an infrared box which we tested out with a Sony Handycam and let me tell you, holy crap did it work good. Couldn't get any footage from the, the test because my buddy's Handycam ran on tape and the heads were misaligned and it was eating tapes so couldn't get any footage but we tested it through the viewfinder and holy shit did it look nice. So this is my homemade infrared School box. discovery today. Apparently my cameras can see the infrared spectrum and I found these in my garage. What we got here is a 20 piece infrared and they're 10 millimeter infrared LEDs. This is what I got here. Now this light, when you turn, when you plug it into a battery, all you see is a red light. But when you uh, aim it at the camera, you get a real bright white light. I'm going to show you that now. I've been using these little watch batteries. They're only three volts, so it's not enough to blow the res uh, to blow up the LED, but it's definitely enough to illuminate it. So all you do is I just connect it up like this, and right now on the side, well you can see how white it is. That's pretty bright. All I see is a red dot in the middle. So my camera can see the uh, infrared spectrum. So my battle plan is, is I got 20 of these guys. I'm going to build me an infrared light. And um, the dog wants to be in the frame. There we go. Yeah, I'm getting licked by the dog. Awesome. I found one of these battery packs. I tested it. She throws 6 volts. So that's pretty decent. So um, I'm going to get this project going. I'll let you guys know how it goes once I'm done. Alrighty guys. What I've gone ahead and done was I've got myself 6 LEDs wired into a 10 ohm resistor. Went out and bought a project box which I'm going to use to put this all together. Now I had an old switch kicking around somewhere that I'm going to use for the um, turn it off and on and I bought a pack I don't know why but they sell them in five packs but I bought a pack of five of the nine volt hookups. I originally was going to use the six volt battery pack but it's not going to have enough oomph to do what I want to do. So I'm going to go with a 9 volt battery to power the array of 12 uh, infrareds. Here's hoping after I hook this all up and give her some juice I don't grenade the whole system. So I'm going to get that all together and uh, show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay guys, basically I got six. I got the um, IR LEDs soldered in an array. So I got the six and the other six. So they're soldered in series and then connected in parallel making for a total of 12. Now like I said in, my, in the other part, what I'm doing is I'm using one of these guys here here go 9 volts. I already tested it. I uh, took some watch batteries that were 3 volts. Basically they're just those little little watch batteries that you find in like Peters and stuff. They're 3 volts a piece. What I've done was I put them in series making for a total of 9 volts just like one of those square batteries would be for a test and all the LEDs fired up. It looked awesome. They're actually glowing red which uh, some would say oh you're burning them out. No actually these ones do have a faint red glow while they're firing so you can tell that they're on. They were really bright on the lens so I could actually control it so it doesn't stay on all the time you know who needs infrared while you're sleeping 
and the resistor to end here. 10 ohm resistor, brown, black, black. I have a little rhyme to remember how to get the resistor codes. I'm not allowed to say it on YouTube because it's uh, kind of brutal. But uh, basically, they're not all aimed, but uh, once they are, you can tell here that they are all firing. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this into the box, set it all up. Hopefully I can find my 9 volt batteries and uh, get this thing going with the proper charge. If I find this doesn't deliver enough oomph, I might daisy chain in some more power or uh, go back to uh, Radio Shack and pick me up another one of these guys. So that's where I'm at right now and uh, yeah, it's going pretty good. I'm pretty impressed. So once it's all built, I'll show you the final product. Till then. Alright, so I've gone ahead and drilled holes in my project box. I only drilled the one. That's basically how far the LEDs are going to stick out. If you look inside here, you see it's just pushed through. What I'm probably going to do is use some super glue on the inside and smash the LED into it so that it holds on and it won't fall out on its own. Right now it's just pressure fitted in there, a little push, they pop right out. I'm going to super glue them in there or I'm going to hot glue them. And that should hopefully solve the problem of holding the LEDs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bank up top then down below put another mirroring bank there. And they're all going to be aimed forward. Hopefully it's enough to throw enough light to see what's going on. Um, yeah, this project's really making me excited. It's really starting to turn out good. Biggest problem was the wiring and I just proved that works. So the rest of it's just cosmetics. Once you get that all down, we're ready to rock. Spent about an hour in the garage wading through all the crap. Found my drill. So I busted a couple holes through uh, here. Yeah, they're not lined up, they're not perfect, but you know what? It's minus 20 out, I don't care. That's for a switch, I'm gonna use this rocker switch. I like it, it works nice, and it's black, it matches the box. And the switch just pops in here and clips into place, so it'll be pretty styling. Once I'm done, it'll look good. Uh, minus the fact that the LEDs are gonna be kind of out of whack, but whatever. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and install the LEDs. I'm gonna have to uh, tape up the leads though, because uh, they're all exposed and I don't have any heat shrink, so I'm just gonna figure something out. I'll use some electrical tape or something. I'm gonna set that all up and then punch them through, glue them in place, and we'll be rocking. All right, guys, I finally got it all together. It looks like crap, but it works. So there's the array right there. Looks like a spaghetti mess inside basically for the test I don't care what the inside looks like there it is turned on pretty freaking bright right so that's at 9 volts I might be able to stage it up to 12 I'm gonna put the lid on this bad boy take her downstairs into the bathroom where it's pitch black fire it up and see how she fires all right guys I'm downstairs now I'll show you basically in better light I put the lid back on this thing so uh, actually it looks pretty badass right now and there you go there's the back the other side the light emitting side and your toggle switch. Let's go take this guy into the bathroom and see how well fire is in the pitch black. Right now we're in complete darkness. Now the problem is it is throwing light. I can't see anything. But it is throwing a lot of light. But let me try something else. Okay guys, I switched it over to night mode. Uh, it was a little bit better, but not quite. So it does pick up the infrared. So this would be good for spy cams and stuff, but my other light's still better. Maybe I'll hop up the voltage and see what I can get. But there you have it. Cheap little infrared light that I basically built for uh, pretty much nothing. And uh, there you can see me. I can't see me, but you can see me. So yeah, infrared light. Chances are your camera can see them. If you want to find out if your camera can see infrared, Grab any old wireless remote control, like a VCR remote, TV remote, aim it at your camera while you have it turned on, press any button on it. If you see any white lights on your screen where the infrared LED is, then guess what? Your camera can see the infrared spectrum. Now there are hacks online to convert your camera into a better infrared camera. Go ahead and investigate those. I'm impressed with this. It works pretty good. So, uh, <laughs> ooh, all right. Have a good one guys, take her easy, and if she's really easy, take her twice. Yeah, it's been a long, long, long battle on YouTube. I don't want to say a battle, because battles, uh, well, it could theoretically be a battle if you think about it. Like on Skaven Channel, that was back in the day. Let's face it, everybody's goal on YouTube is to get become a YouTube partner. That is the goal. Even if you don't want to monetize, you don't care about making money, you want to become a YouTube partner, 
so you can get the option to put the banner on your channel custom thumbnails and just really have a good time on youtube and, and completely brand your channel the way you like and yeah i guess you could say that i sort of it, you, my youtube thing was a battle because with the skaven channel it started off in uh actually christmas 2008 and then about april april 2009 they started wanting to monetize a couple of my videos so i said okay let's monetize so i monetized a bunch of videos and in about three months i made it i made threshold i made the hundred dollar threshold and i was all excited and stuff and then i got the dreaded email from youtube that your account has been suspended due to inact or invalid activity click bombing basically so i contacted youtube and tried to appeal and I couldn't get appealed and I was like well for freak's sakes what do I do now so I uh, I then contacted uh, uh, a few people and talked to them and said well how'd you guys do it because they had the same thing and they said just open up another account and don't monetize your videos because I wasn't about making money I just wanted the partnership and I thought the only way to get partnership at the time was to monetize the videos when you got it so that they saw, saw you were serious and gave you my, my partnership status so sure enough I uh, I went ahead and made vlog in life because I wanted to change and uh, did this channel here and started off with those really weird videos like I'll show you one now so that's obviously a lot different than what I'm doing daily right so I, I started off with that and then went on to uh, doing the daily vlogs which you've seen so far and it's been pretty awesome it's been a, a long road it's been a fun road and uh, moment we got partnership it was like bang on i was so happy but of course once again the click bombing started and sure enough i got attacked in my sleep and lost my partnership however this time around when i did the appeal the person who click bombed me admitted to it and admitted that i wasn't their only target they were also targeting crazy logie breathing antler mike and one pug life so i went ahead and submitted that information in my appeal and that's what got me to win my battle so because dum dum was smart enough to admit to being a dink i won so yes i did lose my adsense but i got it back through an appeal and then i never monetized since and it was a shame because my whole plan for the monetizing was to put the money back into the channel through contests and stuff like that and uh that that was my big idea was let's monetize it get some money that i can now put youtube money back into youtube you know what i mean and uh try and give back to the audience and one asshole had to go and wreck all that so sure enough, a um, little while later, I meet up with a YouTuber named Happy Cabby. You probably heard about him. He was talking about leaving Machinima because uh, he was, uh, I don't know, he just, things weren't going well for him there and he was uh, upset about things and stuff. So he said he was going to partner with two other networks. So I contacted him and I said, how many networks are there out there and can you point me in the right direction? So he got me in touch with a, a recruiter over at TGN. And the recruiter looked over my channels and said, you got some good stuff, we want you. Now TGN is a gaming network. Let's go in the garage where there's no wind. TGN stands for The Gaming Network. Mainly they bring on video game vloggers, such as, you probably heard of them, Swifty, Towley, big time live streamers on, uh, on the internet who live stream World of Warcraft play. And they're pretty damn good at World of Warcraft too, you know. And then they got other people like, uh, Nahoiga, who I gave a shout out to in the past, who's also a gamer. She plays Modern Warfare 3 and a lot of the FPSs. She's currently doing a walkthrough on Batman Arkham City. And, um, you know, a bunch of other gamers. Like, it's like all they do is video game play, talk about video game hardware and stuff. And I am the first vlogger they wanted to bring on board to see how well it would work. And so far, they're really liking it. And a lot of people ask me, well, what's the bonus to joining a network? Because a lot of people see that a network takes a cut in the pay. Well, if you think about it, if you privatize partnership your channel, as in going through AdSense and doing that yourself, let's say somebody click bombs you, you're done. Game over, you're done. You can't contact YouTube because you got nobody in YouTube. You can't contact anybody. All you can do is appeal and hope to Christ you win. Otherwise, you're stuck being a regular YouTuber for life. You lost your partnership. You'll never be allowed to be back in the partner program. You're done. Game over, call it quits, you're done. Well, with TGN, and other networks like Machinima, uh, Screen, ScreenFlow, I think it's called? No, Full Screen, sorry. Uh, Maker Studios. They deal with the bullshit that AdSense comes with. So if somebody does click bomb you, they see it, they deal with it. You don't have to, they take care of it. Also, if you have a problem with YouTube, you contact your rep. 
because guess what? TGN, Machinima, Full Screen, all those guys, they got a guy sitting in YouTube's office right there, just, just sitting there, ready to, to take care of your questions and answers. They will deal for that, deal with that for you, no problem, which is awesome. Having a guy on the inside, it's quite possibly the coolest feature ever, because if you have a problem, you know that your solution is gonna be answered the next day through an email. You email your guy and you say, hey, I got a problem. All right, this video is being flagged for false claims. What the hell? Like this happened to me with my own music that I made, that I posted. It was being flagged by YouTube saying, you need to prove that you own the rights to this music. And it's like, bro, I wrote the song. <laughs> like I actually gone as far in the past to send them the Magic Magic's Music Maker file and said, here it is. Now you gotta go out and buy Magic's Music Maker and these following sound libraries, install them and load this up and then you'll see that I created this song. So, you know, step off my cornflakes, bro. And uh, with, uh, make it like with, with a network, when that happens, just contact the network and you say, listen, this is my music. I wrote this song. This is all me. And I have the rights. Here's the uh, license agreement and blah, blah, blah. And they take care of it from there and the next day everything's hunky-dory. Also, like the, a network will promote you, will help promote your channel and push your channel and other things. But yes, they do take a cut in the pay. That's a given. Usually they take 20% off the top. So we're a regular partnership, like a, you know, a personal partnership you make and they say 68% and YouTube takes 32. Well, now you make 48%, your network takes 20% and YouTube takes 32%. Not that bad of a deal for a guy like me who originally was making 0%. You know what I'm saying? So YouTube wasn't making a dime off me. Nobody was making a dime off me. I was, uh, nobody was making a dime. In the end of story. That's basically how it was. But with a network, you're protected, you're safe. As long as you follow the community guidelines, don't do any bullshit, stay away from copyright. You know, if you do it right and you follow the community guidelines, you follow the AdSense guidelines, because they still apply, you know, you follow all the guidelines on a network, then you basically, all you have to do with a network is keep pumping out the videos and they take care of all the friggin' all, all the other bullshit. So click bombing is no longer a threat, which is awesome. I knew I'd find a way around that and the way is through a network. Now, keep in mind, if you've lost your AdSense in the past, uh, this was mentioned on a couple of videos uh, by other people who were talking about Social Blade. If you go to Social Blade and you blade your account, you'll notice if you're getting over a thousand views a, a day, that you'll have the option to apply for partnership with RPM, which is uh, Maker Studios. Now, I tried that with Skaven. I figured, holy shit, this might work, you know? Contacted them, applied for it, got an email back saying, oh my God, yes, you are so what we're looking for. We're sending you the contract, sign the contract, sign the contract, sent it back to them, and then they went to try and release my AdSense on the channel, which had a disabled AdSense, and nothing. They came back and said, sorry, there's nothing we can do for you at this time because this account has a uh, invalid AdSense bound to it. There's nothing that can be done. So uh, sorry for wasting your time. Uh, hopefully in the future, we can help you with another channel. They even suggested that I make another channel you know, tell my users to go over to that channel and then uh, go from there. But in the end, I was like, you know what? Vlogging life is already more successful than the Skaven channel. I'm just not going to bother. So that's why I let Skaven go dormant. I'm not going to bother using it. However, there are a lot of videos on there that are still pretty good. So I left them on there. There's a little bit of a history uh, blurb for you. Kind of a long drawn out part of the video, but uh, you get the points. So right on. Anywho, I'm going to head back inside. I made a coffee before I came out for my cigarette. I'm gonna drink that coffee, hopefully wake up. Gotta have a shower before I head into work. So let's get this done. Talk to you guys in a bit. Well, a lot of people who follow me from back in the Skaven days remembers a character I made, Mr. Airsoft Ponage. Basically, he was a guy with an airsoft rifle. And when he first started off, he wore military glasses, like the kind that keep the dirt and the sun out of your eyes, and a military helmet. And well, I'll show you a couple clips from his shows and you can see what he was all about. Mr. Airsoft Ponage, and with me as always is my Steyr Fog. Today's victim is something we all use in the morning when we have those tough times of getting out of bed. What I'm referring to is coffee. Victim 
It's something we all like to indulge in sometimes at dinner. We all like to have a few glasses of it. Sometimes it makes us tipsy. What I'm referring to is a glass of wine. So you get the gist of it. Basically using airsoft rifles to break inanimate objects and plastic things and stuff that I could easily destroy. Well, something weird happened a couple days ago. I'll show you that now. Alrighty, I'm a little hungry. Let's go get some food and stuff. I like food and stuff. Let's see what we got for food and stuff. Huh. Alrighty. Oh, not again. Zoom, you motherfucker. Holy shit. Not again. What am I gonna do? Did someone call for an exterminator? Holy shit, what the f Where have you been? I am Mr. Airsoft Poundage. Well, you know I've been, like, touring the country. Oh, yeah. And ridding the world of inanimate objects. So you've been touring the world, eh? Because that's what I do. We got a problem. What's the problem, candy waste? Something I can help with? Yeah, actually, maybe you can with that firearm. See, we got this, like, demon thing in the fridge, and it's totally messing with the program. <sighs> Think maybe you could, uh, come over here and lay waste to it? That's nothing. All right, bud, hammer down. Well, that's nothing for Mr. Airsoft Conage. Let's, let's see if you got what it takes to kill that son of a bitch. Let's take care of this coding style. Lock and load. <laughs> well, looks like Mr. Airsoft Poundage is gonna have to deal with this one. Let's see what we can do. Who are you gonna call? Airsoft Poundage. Mm. 
He's been out of the woodworks for a while. Apparently he's been touring the world. It's kind of weird, but um, apparently he's been on missions and stuff. So way to go, Airsoft Ponage. It's been a while since he's been around. So that's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet indeed. Mr. Airsoft Ponage, people. Mr. Airsoft Ponage. Ridding the world of inanimate objects. Yeah. Alrighty. Time to fly off to work. So yeah, I've been so busy today, I haven't really had a chance to comment on comments, but uh, ah, I'll take care of that when I get to work, you know. I think we covered a lot of the questions today though, a lot of the camera mount questions, how I built them, what I use, you know, my camera arsenal question, what I have, what I use, you know. There's other cameras that I never mentioned because I sold them since, uh, you know, since I had them. Way back in the day, I had a, a barrage of Samsungs. I had the Samsung Samsung MX20, which was a standard definition 480p camcorder. And then I wanted something more compact, so at Boxing Day, I ended up buying the Samsung uh, C10 uh, camcorder, which was more like a pocket cam, but it had a flip-out screen, but you had to hold it on a cocky angle. You held it on a 35-degree angle, and it basically was nicer on the wrist to hold that camera. The only thing I didn't like about the camera was the microphone was so close to the lens so when the autofocus would engage or when you zoom you heard everything through the microphone. And another camera I forgot to put on there that I still do own is my Kodak uh, ZM1 Mini. The little red Mini I got two boxing days ago. Which I haven't used it much because it shoots uh, standard definition 640 by 480 not widescreen and I kind of like widescreen format which is why I'm kind of upset that the ZE2 which was the Kodak Mini ZE2 that I had or the Kodak Playful ZE2 sorry the one I got from Staples for 50 bucks I was really butthurt when that thing actually sucked I was really upset about that like the quality was just horrible the audio quality and all in all, it was just a piece of junk, but uh, I'm glad I found this Kodak ZE-1 because let me tell you, for filming stuff like, you know, like what Pug does and Bill does and stuff like that, a camcorder is your best bet. But for vlogging every day, a pocket camera is probably your best friend. Pocket camera all the way. That's why whenever somebody asks me, hey man, what's the best camera I can get? Well, first, my first question is always, what do you plan on doing? Do you plan on doing product reviews? Do you plan on videotaping sports? Do you plan on videotaping yourself, like doing daily vlogs? Do you, like, if you're gonna do sports, you want something with a high frame rate, something with at least 60 frames per second, which the Kodak lineup can easily do at 720p. Same with the GoPro, it can do 720, it can do 720p, 60 frames. But you also want something with a clean audio pickup if it's something where noises are gonna happen, you know? So that's why I always ask people, what are your intentions? What do you want to film? Like for Billy, his handy cams are perfect for what he does because he always tripods them when he's gonna be doing something where he can't use his hands. And when he's aiming it at his face, it's not a big deal. Like I've vlogged with a camcorder before. I used my TM80, which was perfect for that. And it did a great job. But honestly, I liked using the flip more. And I liked using, the, my, my favorite camera of all time was the ZX3 by Kodak. It's a shame that it took on water and now it's defunct. I'm probably gonna figure out how to tear that one apart and clean out the circuit board and see if I can get it to fire again. But uh, it's a real shame that it's, it's down for the count. The ZX5 does a pretty good job too. I just find the audio a bit too tinny for my liking. It's like it drops all the low end and just keeps the high end, you know? And I don't really like that. Another thing I didn't show my camera gear was the audio recorder, my Sony audio recorder that I use in the cars because a lot of the microphones on the, on the cameras pick up the road noise and the car noise rather than picking up what I wanted to pick up, my voice. So with this little Sony uh, camera recorder, video uh, sound recorder, 
does the job perfectly. It's it's a great little add-on for any uh, for any arsenal. Like Pug One bought the um, the Bluetooth mic for his camera, and yeah, it works pretty good. But the only dilemma with that is Bluetooth is limited by range. Now, if it was 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, that, yeah, that might be a little bit better. But since Bluetooth itself is limited big time by range, you can only go so far before that mic is just going to not read the, the camera anymore and fail. I think Bluetooth has a range of 100 meters, no not even that, I think it's 25 meters and that just drops. Where with a field recorder like the Sony or if you want to get more expensive and buy like the Zoom H1 or the Zoom H2 or H3 whatever, or the Zoom H2 or H3 whatever, you know those are just fantastic compared to the Sony. Those are pro. I do believe that's what Speed Freak TV uses, that's why his videos sound so pro is he's running a Sony, or a Sony, a Zoom H1 mic into a wireless transmitter, or wireless receiver, sorry, and then on him he has a wireless lapel mic, and that's why his audio quality sounds so much better than anything you've heard on the internet, and that's why he sounds so studio, it's because that H1 does a lot of work for him, a lot of work. But all in all, this Sony cost me 20 bucks, and with the right mic attachment, you know what? It does a fantastic job of recording the audio while I'm in the car. And then it's just a matter of syncing it up. Before every clip, what I do is I get the camera recording, I get the audio recorder recording, and I clap my hands three times just so I can sync up the three claps in the video editor. And then I got my audio in sync with my video, and everything sounds good. Like everything's in sync. My mouth moves with the audio, and it's good which is a problem I had with, with the other uh, glasses, um, with my, my cheap Chinese son of a bitching glasses. Holy shit, there's a lot of people down here today. What the frig's going on? Huh, must be something happening, but yeah, the cheap Chinese glasses, I find the audio and video that runs a little quicker, and it's hard to keep them in sync. So you're, you, you're non-stop adjusting your, your timing and adjusting your wavelengths, and it's a pain in the ass and half the time you use those friggin things and they don't work because they're junk so but uh, Billy showed me a pair of, of uh, sunglasses recorders that he ordered off of eBay and he sent me the link to them so I might see how his work out his have a hundred and forty uh, degree angle uh, wide angle lens and when he, whenever he gets them and does a video with them I'll, I'll see how they work out and maybe I'll order a set of those too I don't know Holy crap, I got a dodge on my ass, boys, and he's like right on my ass. I'm scared. He keeps like speeding up and slowing down like he's trying to make me go faster. It's like, bro, I can't. I can only go so freaking quick here. Come on, get off my dick. Well, if you're going to ride my ass, at least pull my hair. Ha! <laughs> Alrighty, we're almost at work, so... Today has been a long and hectic day of editing and video collabing and all sorts of things and other things and a bunch of junk and... What the hell's going on? There's people everywhere. Something's got to be happening downtown. But uh, we'll stove the car here. And I guess I'll talk to you guys on my next break. So until then, peace the frig out. Alrighty, it's friggin' break time. Yeah, so far tonight it's been pretty, pretty lax. Not too busy. Seems like the sun's coming, or trying to come out. Oh uh, yeah, figured I'd come up for break and do a little walk around with the frig, right? Well, it's been brutal, you know, trying to go for two hours today. Really brutal. Especially, uh, now that I'm at work, I only have selected times when I can actually whip out the camera and vlog, right? Breaks and lunch, so that's it. So let's chat with Billy, see what's going on in Billy's neck of the woods. And, uh... And Billy told me he was hunting for a flat screen TV, but they're all so expensive, so he thought he'd improvise. Well, let me show you what he went and did. Here's a video from uh, senior field correspondent Bill's T Max. Enjoy. Well, thank you, Vlogging Life. So, how's it going, tubes? It's Bill's T Max here, just doing a little uh, 500th video correspondency thingy for uh, my good buddy Vlogging Life there, or some of you know him as Adam, or the Northern Tech, or. Or Mr. Airsoft Ponage, I think that's long gone, but a lot of you know him as Skaven. Good buddy named Skaven, and 
Arcane Fire Nice. Um, Mr. I don't know, he's got so many channels I can't keep up to him, kind of thing, but uh, friggin' rates. Anyways, 500th frickin' vlog, can you believe that? Oh, yeah, man, it's been a lot of frickin' work, eh, buddy? I frickin' know what you're talking about. It's, uh, it's a pile of work just for some entertainment, eh? But, uh, you know, we do it because we love it. And we love freaking entertaining the tubes and stuff. And uh, that's why I do it anyways. But uh, anyways, freaking uh, got a bit of a problem here, tubes. Uh, the TV at the house quit. You know, it's a yeah, fairly old TV, I guess. It's a small one. But um, the wife says, well, maybe it's about time we go and get one of those nice new flat screens. So I'm like... Frig, why not? I got the perfect friggin' idea. Let's get a friggin' flat screen. So, yeah, here we go. Let's go get a flat screen. So, you know, we're looking around, looking around, looking around, and friggin' expensive, eh? And uh, I, I said to her, she was freaking out on me, eh? Like, can you just friggin' pick one and we'll get home? I'm like, wait a minute. This has got to be like the right TV, okay? I've got a grip on things here. One sec. Well, then of course she yells at me, you don't got a grip on freaking nothing. I told you I wanted a flat screen TV, not some freaking more compact one than we already had. So I'm like, freaking okay, like chill out, you know, I'll get you a freaking flat screen. Holy crap. Boy, did I get the freaking beaten Zen tubes. I've been sleeping in the woodshed for like a week. She won't let me back in the house. I said to her, you wanted a flat screen. It's not compact as much as it was before. It's freaking flat. Uh, but then, yeah, she said, well, you better go sleep in the woodshed and don't come back until you bring me a flat screen TV. So, still looking tubes. I'm still freaking looking. So anyways, hope you guys and uh, freaking enjoyed this little bit of a uh, correspondence here from the uh, good old boneyard. And uh, my name's Bill's T Max, and I'm freaking uh, super happy, pleasured about freaking uh, vlogging life getting to those 500. I passed that already. Hey, buddy? Yeah. And uh, I think I'm at like almost 700 or something stupid now, so. But, uh, yeah. So, anyways, big, big congratulations, buddy. And uh, uh, I know she's a freaking long haul and stuff, but I can't wait to get to 1,000. It's going to be freaking awesome. So, we'll see, uh, you know what uh, what you get into by then so uh, but anyways tubes you gotta get a uh, freaking uh, vlogging life they're all encouraged to come down for like a big visit we could do like another sweet ass live show or something eh? but uh, you know he's uh, he's got things he's got lots of things so but uh, I want him to bring that uh, nice freaking uh, white car down you know we can uh, peel some of the rubber off it and stuff you know off the back you know that'd be super awesome but uh, I don't know maybe after watching that carnage he might not bring her down because you know I'll tell him first thing I'll say is uh, can I drive it <laughs> and he'll be like no but anyways freaking rights tubes uh, so yeah my name's Bill's T Max Bill for short is what I go by but uh, officially Bill's T Max for you know this stuff so I guess I got a mess to clean up now and uh, go get my bed ready from the woodshed and uh, you know cuddle up with the raccoons and the squirrels in the freaking woodshed so yeah, freaking rights tube. So until next time, uh, buy yourself a real flat screen. Don't uh, do what I did because it doesn't work. So anyways, tubes, have a good day. See you later. Yeah, I tried telling him you can't make a flat screen out of a CRT, but I guess he went and proved me wrong, eh? His wife's not too happy about that one. Oh well, it's the way she goes, eh? Can't please everybody. But uh, yeah, it's uh, he's definitely quite the crazy character, that boy. Don't mind hanging out with him one bit because you know he's you're going to have fun, so... Frig yeah. So yeah, not quite sure what else to really go on. I think I've uh, ran out of ideas. Not really, but uh, you know, a lot of people think I should sell all my cameras. And well, that's what Bruce is saying. I should sell all my cameras, but keep a couple and buy a real good camera. The problem is, is selling cameras. You can't really sell them on Kijiji because nobody buys them. The people who do buy them, let's say I were to sell like a flip for 75 bucks, you got the low ballers who come up and say 10 bucks, you know, 20 bucks. They just lowball the living shit out of you. Like there's a Panasonic S9 on there, or SD9 on there right now for $300. This camera originally retailed 
for close to $800, no problem. And the lady who owns it can't move the camera. People are just low-balling her and, you know, it's worth 300 bucks. If I was in the market for another camcorder, I would have definitely picked it up. But right now I'm not really in the market for one. So, and I, my next camera, I want it to have a hot shoe. And uh, I'm looking for my next camcorder to be in the $1,200 range. Like, I want a prosumer camera. Get something really good, you know? Something with a manual focus, with a manual zoom. Something really, really, really friggin' nice. That's what I want. Now a lot of people will say, why don't you just get a DSLR? Well, the problem is if I got a DSLR, the girlfriend would want to steal it all the time and take pictures. And I never have my camera, so. <laughs> that and, I don't know, some DSLRs take pretty good video, but some of them just take shit video. But then again, it's all about the lenses, right? So now you gotta add more accessories onto it. If you wanna get the high range zoom, you gotta get a high range zoom lens. So it's all in, in what you want. Me personally, I'd like uh, a simple, like a, like a nice prosumer, Canon, almost over the shoulder, manual zoom with automatic capabilities, manual focus with automatic capabilities. The one I saw was about, well, 1500 bucks. Kind of expensive, but it's the creme de la creme. It's like top-notch, high-end equipment. You could shoot a Blu-ray video with this thing and it would look phenomenal. But then again, any camera you get that can do 24 megs per second will shoot Blu-ray. So, that's right on. So it's been 500 days, 499 theoretically straight, of making videos. Yeah, we definitely did see a lot of cameras in that time. That is for sure. So, right on. Holy shit, it's a running snowman. Never would I ever have thought seeing a running snowman out here. Holy shit. So far though, my favorite camera to shoot with is this Kodak Playful Z1. It does a great job. It's lightweight, it's small. You know, I can bring it into stores and son of a bitch record in there and nobody even guesses what I'm doing. So, so far it's been probably one of the best. Here's a little bit of a question for you guys while I'm in front of the Trans Am here. What do you think? Do you think I should put a great big screaming firehawk on the hood or not? Let me know. I've been pondering the idea. The girlfriend says it needs something on there. I don't know, personally, I think it's fine the way it is, but uh, I don't know. And now that I know a guy who does vinyl, Billy, he could probably make me a firehawk and we could actually rock out with a firehawk on the hood. So, just a thought. Thought I'd throw it out there and see what you people think. Does Trans Am need a vinyl on the hood? Should I just leave it naked? What do you say? Well, I'm hoping the rest of the night is like tonight. Apparently one of the guys has been off for like two years now. He came back today. Started back today. Holy shit, Crow. I'm trying to vlog here. Shut up. That little noisy bugger up there. Wrecking the vlog. What a dick. But, uh... Yeah, I'm thinking that maybe... Oh yeah, sorry. What was I talking about? Yeah, Bob. Uh, <laughs> he's been off for like two years. And today he made a comeback. But the doctor ordered that for the time being he can only work three hour shifts and then uh, later on he can only work uh, night shifts, he's not allowed to work days. Will that cock over the program for me? I don't know if the doctor orders him to have Monday, uh, work Monday to Friday and have the weekends off then yeah. That is going to cock over the program for me, big times, because I'm going to lose my weekends and I'll be forced to work weekends again and I really don't want that you know I worked my ass off to get to where I am to have to get bumped out by some guy because he has a disability friggin sucks you know so that better not happen because I'll lose my shit big time mind you God knows if I'll have a job in the near future to begin with you know if this place sells and they shut her down then uh, it won't really frickin matter much but we'll see what happens but uh, the fact that he can only work three hours a day right now is kind of kind of sad and the fact that he can only work night shifts which makes no sense like we're on a schedule now so if he works days he works days just means he has to go to bed earlier at night I don't know why they're forcing him on night shifts I personally would like to see the doctor's note that states that but that's just me I don't know it's just one great big friggin mess one great big friggin mess indeed but we'll just go with it and see what happens and hope to Christ he doesn't try and bump me out of my friggin weekends off because if I have to work the weekends again, holy shit, I'm telling you I'm putting resumes out like tomorrow. I will friggin walk. There's no way in hell I'm letting that happen. Hey, while we're out here, let's go see how much they're asking for this truck now. Because uh, that truck is still for sale. You know the one. That one. Yeah, still for sale. Still for sale. Let's see how much they're asking here. 
see if you dropped the price at all. Oh, you dropped the price a little bit. Yep. Still asking way too much if you ask me. $6,000 for a 2000 certified. Yeah, way too much money. No thanks. I build pass. I build pass. Truck like that being a 2000. Rear wheel drive only. Should be able to scoop that up for a lot less, but we'll see. Anywho, so I think my brake is well over with, so I'm gonna head her back inside and I'll talk to you guys on lunch. So, peace the frig out. Alrighty, well, it's lunchtime and figured I'd come outside for a cigarette, which I haven't even pulled out of my pocket yet and lit. So, let's get this thing lit and uh, we'll carry on with the show. So, as a lot of you know, we have the dog Oreo. You've seen him in the past in many films, such as the one I showed earlier, Oreo and the Hose. And he's been in other films, such as Oreo the Buckethead, which I'll play for you right now. Oreo? <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? Hey, Buckethead. What are you doing, Buckethead? Thanks. <laughs> what are you doing, Buckethead? Does it do that at all? No. <laughs> Oreo, where are you going? Where are you going, Buckethead? <laughs> Come on, Where are you going, buddy? <laughs> oh my god. Oreo, come here. Come here, Oreo. Come on. Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going, buddy? Oh my god. Where are you going? I've never seen anything like it. What are you doing, buddy? Where are you going? I've never seen a dog do that in my life. The fact that he won't put it. Yeah, we're laughing at him. The fact that he won't put it down either. Where are you going, buddy? <laughs> buddy? No, it's funny. Oreo? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh my god. Don't try and maneuver stairs. <laughs> Dude, where are you going? <laughs> Why is he doing that though? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Where are you going, buddy? That's me, dude. I can't see where I'm going. Oreo. Just get a flower inside. So, that'd be a good one. How many oh, funny stereos are Where are you going, buddy? You should get the picture of funny stereos and send that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you should. You could bring it for $10,000. Where are you going, buddy? What you doing? What you doing? Where are you going, eh? <laughs> Why is everything white? Am I blind? <laughs> it's gonna walk into the wall. <laughs> He's getting it. The corner of his eye there. Oh, really? Meant to put the umbrella after. Unless you want to do it. Oh, that's flowers. <laughs> and barbecue. <laughs> This is how it feels to be blind. I got, why is my one eyeball not working? <laughs> what a retard. Okay, drop it. Oreo, drop it. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Go get it. Go get it. Go get the bucket. Get the bucket. Get the bucket. Good boy. Good boy. He's also been in Oreo Loves the Deep Snow, which I'll play for you right now. Hey guys, Adam here. Well, like London, we got a lot of snow too. And you know what's awesome? The deeper the snowbank, the happier the puppy. Oreo loves the snow. Look at this. Look at this crazy guy. Just plowing through the snow. Playing fetch with an icicle. Look at him, he just loves the deep snow, this guy. 
buries his face in it. <laughs> Such a little turd. Deeper the snowbank, happier the puppy. Where are you going, buddy? <laughs> Oreo, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh yeah, he's definitely a winter puppy. Covered in snow, dude. So, like I said, the deeper the snow, the happier the puppy. And he's pretty happy right now. Oh, you guys want to see something funny? Felix, however, is not a fan of the snow. As you can tell, his girlfriend's holding him. He wants down. And now he's not too happy. <laughs> he's like, no. Nope. Do not time. want. Want back inside now, please. <laughs> <laughs> Puppy loves snow, kitty not so much. Anyway guys, take care. That's something about Oreo though, he's a Pomeranian and he loves the water. You bring him to the lake, he loves to go in the lake. Bring him somewhere with a swimming pool, give you 20 minutes, he'll be in that pool. Which is kind of bad if you have a liner because his claws can't tear the liner but uh, he's usually pretty good at using ladders. And uh, he's just a special dog, he loves to do things for attention like he does something and people make a fuss, i.e. the bucket head. We were making a fuss over it. He kept it up until I told him to drop the bucket. But that's just the way he is. He's like that. Well, a lot of you who don't know this, if you started following me with Vlog in Life and didn't watch the Skaven channel, there was another dog that we had, a dog named Sammy. Now, when we got Sammy, she was, in, she was only six months old. She wasn't properly trained by mommy on how to play and uh, kind of a handful. And by that, I mean she kept trying to kill Oreo. For me, she was a great dog. She listened to me, loved me, followed me around, did everything for me. But uh, she didn't really care for the girlfriend too much because female dogs are like that. They can easily uh, get territorial, territorial with women. So that's how Oreo is with me right now. Oreo will fight me at every chance to try and be the master of the pack. And I gotta fight him at every chance to make sure he realizes that I'm the dominant one. But uh, with Sammy, Sammy followed me around. She was a great dog. But uh, I got some video clips here of Sammy for the people who aren't aware of her. So here's a, a video of Oreo and Sammy playing. So we're having some fun here in the backyard. We're letting the dogs off leash and uh, we gave Oreo a really big icicle. He seems to really enjoy it. Oreo! <laughs> Oreo, sit. Hey, sit. <laughs> He's got to show it off. Shows it off too close. <laughs> ah, Sammy. If you can't get the icicle, get the dog holding the icicle. <laughs> okay, so the girlfriend's gonna throw a snowball and Oreo's gonna chase after it. So the girlfriend's got a snowball. It? Go get it. And Oreo's gonna try and find it. This is kind of funny. He doesn't realize that finding a snowball in snow. It's like finding a unique hay needle in a stack of hay. Oh, and she almost hit the dogs. <laughs> oh, look at those guys. Crazy puppies. I think this is the first time Sammy's been off leash to be able to romp this far out in the yard. Oreo, come. God, she's getting big. What's it got in his mouth? Oh. Yeah, he started that. There's chunks of Oreo all over the backyard. Oh boy, oh boy. So uh, there you have it guys. Cheap entertainment for the dogs. All you gotta do is get some old roof candy, as I call it. That would be these uh, icicles here. Get some roof candy, oh big dog. <laughs> yeah, you just get some icicles, and for some reason Oreo goes, goes crazy over them. Sammy doesn't quite know what to do with them yet.
All right, guys, so there you have it. Best way to entertain your dogs, snow and icicles. Sweet. All right, guys, take her easy. And remember, if she's really easy, take her twice. I've got another funny clip of them, too. Um, one night I left the camera going all night and had it focused on their crates. And uh, just watching them go, it was a friggin' classic. Watching them two play. And no, not really play, but just roll around and stuff in the sleep. And, uh, yeah, it was... It was pretty funny when I reviewed the footage to see what they do. And uh, that's when I realized that Sammy really didn't like Oreo because Sammy wanted all the attention. But uh, check out that clip. It's pretty funny. Oh, hey guys. Yeah, it's me again. It's Adam here. Well, last night the girlfriend and I were wondering, what do our dogs do while we're sleeping? I decided to set up my camera downstairs and record them while they're sleeping. It's actually pretty funny what we got. They just kind of romp around in their crates. Sammy's actually quite humorous. She, she twitches a lot and stuff. Unfortunately, the video is six minutes long, or six hours long, and YouTube has a 10 minute minimum time, right? But what I went ahead and done was super time lapse the video, and uh, I'll show you that now.
All right, guys, so there you have it. Super time lapse, six hours into six minutes. Um, there's a part of that video that I didn't show you. Just to be aware, there is some coarse language in this part of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in at the end here as a little treat. So uh, enjoy that and uh, have a good one, guys. Yep, I missed that dog, but we couldn't have both Oreo and Sammy, so unfortunately we had to uh, had to find Sammy a new home. So we ended up uh, the girlfriend's friend from Burks Falls has a big farm, and she offered to take Sammy because she figured Sammy would be a good sheep dog because she was a, a soft collie, I think a smooth collie. That's the name. You know, she looked like a lassie, but uh, she didn't have the long fluffy fur. So basically, we ended up giving her away to the farm, and she lived there for about two years, and it was unfortunate because she ran out into traffic and got hit by a car. So unfortunately, she didn't last that long, but she did manage to produce a litter of puppies, and they actually have one of the puppies now, which uh, is kind of cool, but Sammy, she passed on. So that sucks, but it's the way she goes.
But we still got Oreo, as you can tell, and he's still spun out as a top. You know, he's still a crazy dog and loves attention and likes to go for car rides with me every once in a while. Sometimes he gets a little bit uh, wound up about it. But uh, I hear a plane and just tell oh, there it is. Friggin' plane. A friggin' plane. Having the dogs is what well, was kind of hectic having both of them. Like Sammy would not listen to the girlfriend at all. And, but she listened to me all the time. She was damn good with me. She knew better. You know? But with the girlfriend, that was another story. And I think it's starting to rain. Yup. It's starting to rain and the sun's out. Love that kind. A little sun shower. Which means we might have a rainbow in the sky. Oh well. But yeah, Sammy was a great dog. But she wasn't, she was hard to discipline her because she just wouldn't take no for an answer. But uh, yeah, I really liked her. She was awesome, but just a pain in the butt sometimes and what can you do? There's that rainbow I was talking about, right there. Right, yeah, rainbow. It's not a double though, it's just a single. But yeah, like I was saying, like with Sammy, it was a pain in the butt because if you had both dogs out, Oreo would go to do his thing and Sammy would just like rough house with him, like nonstop. And she didn't know how to play, so she just beat the living hell out of him. And one point, she actually had Oreo pinned down and was going for the throat. Oreo's yelping, like big time, needing help. And uh, yeah, had to uh, had to run to the rescue for the dog, save the day, you know. Now the wind's picking up. It's probably just wrecking the audio. I'll try turning the back of the camera. And uh, yeah, so that's why we had to get rid of Sammy. Because I've been getting the odd question every once in a while of whatever happened to Sammy, whatever happened to Sammy. So, you know what? I felt that this vlog's probably the perfect opportunity to say what happened to Sammy. If she would have got along better with Oreo, we probably would have kept her. But with the fact that she was so violent with Oreo, we couldn't. And Oreo was there first, so he gains dominance. I wish I had video footage of my other cat. We had Felix. When we got Felix, we got another cat named Poofy. Actually, his name from the, I called him Poofy. His name from the pound was Dorian. And he was an orange Maine Coon. Real fluffy, real friendly, friggin' awesome cat. But due to my allergies being so off the wall, I couldn't uh, couldn't tolerate having the two cats. So unfortunately, we had to give one up. Now, the girlfriend's friend Jeremy said that his mom wanted a cat, and when his mom met Poofy, she fell in love and said, "Yeah, I, I'll take him like yesterday." So I ended up having to give away my cat. So I gave away my dog and my cat, and the girlfriend got to keep her dog and her cat. Fair trade, hmm. but uh, oh well. Oreo's more mine than hers anyway, because he likes me better. That's the way I see it. He listens to me, plays with me, and I come home and he's all excited and he's bouncing around and all like, I'm a puppy, I'm a puppy, I'm a puppy, I'm a puppy, you know? So he's like super happy and stuff when I'm around. But uh, did it stop raining? Can I quit hiding from underneath this tree? Yup. But uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of sad when you got to give away your, your animals because either health or they're just not getting along. But we did manage to teach Sammy how to roll over and by teaching her that we taught her by having Oreo do it and then she kind of mimicked his movements and that worked out pretty well. Oh, the rainbow's gone. Good thing I got it on tape. Yeah. But uh, yeah, other than that, the only other pets we've ever had was a rat named Fatty, who was a real fat rat. My fault, obviously, because I would feed him McDonald's and stuff, because I was told that rats can eat anything. So sure enough, I'm sitting there feeding him like McDonald's and french fries and friggin' pieces of Big Mac, and if I had something to eat, I gave him something to eat from it, and you know, on top of that, I was feeding him his regular food, and yeah, he got pretty fat, pretty large. But like all rats, he developed a tumor and died, which really sucked. He was really cool, though. The one time when Fatty broke out of his cage, he uh, got on the floor, and Felix saw him, so Felix ran over to him and huggled him and started licking him and cleaning him like he was a kitten. That was actually really humorous because Fatty was petrified. He went stone stiff. Like when I picked him up, he didn't move. I put him back in his cage. I thought he had a heart attack and died right then. But I picked him back up, put him back in his cage, closed the door. You know, he's still moving, still breathing. He was just stiff. Like I was like, holy shit, this I've never seen a, an animal do that before. So I put him back in his cage. Two hours later, he was romping around again. He got over it, poor guy. And actually, uh, a while back I was doing a garage cleanup video on the Skaven channel and I mentioned a bunny cage we had a what was it a lion-headed rabbit named Merlin and uh, that thing was interesting with the cats poofy hated that thing poofy kept trying to attack it but Merlin was a good fighter Merlin would just like jump around and give him a hind kick and the cat would go flying and then poofy was like I don't want none of that but Felix, being the special breed that he is, because he's so stupid, he's gonna watch this and be like, hey, I'm not stupid, but he try and mimic the bunny rabbit. He try and jump like him. You know how a rabbit walks, how they 
lead, they, they pull with the front paws and then they kick. They do like a little bunny hop. Well, Felix is watching them go. Felix is like, I can do that. So Felix starts doing it. Like gets right beside the bunny right, watching him do it and then Felix starts doing it. Cutest freaking thing you've ever seen in your life. Oh, I really wish I had that on tape. But I was way before I started YouTubing. Like way, way, way before. So there you go. A little bit of update on the pets. Figured I'd give that to you. Alrighty, well, it's 10 o'clock break and uh, we have guests. Hey! We got Rex over. Wanted to come over and talk computer shit because uh, I don't know if you guys saw his last video, but his computer won't even turn on right now. No, it turns on. Oh, it turns on? No, it turns on. It's just the monitor will not come on. I switched out the, mon uh, I switched out the video card. Does your video card have a power adapter on it? Like the, a power plug in the back? It's got the power plugs. Did you hook it up? Oh yeah, yeah. Because okay. if you don't power it, it won't I, fire. I, I put on, uh, I use Wendy's. What'd you throw? I use Wendy's video card, uh -huh. and it won't even power up with the, it won't even turn the monitor on for that. I might have to service I've this computer. I've RAM. I've done... Well, we're gonna try some shit with Rex's computer later on, probably. He's pretty dickered for videos though. You might be seeing some iPhone videos. You gotta get iMovie for your phone. I was trying to download it there tonight, but I keep uh, ignoring it. Stopping the download, so Son of a bitch. Because it, it. It, it works good for doing videos. You won't be able to put your intros on it though, Shit. but you'll be able to just uh, give her. There's actually apps for doing it. Yeah, yeah, I saw them. <laughs> there's actually a lot of cool apps for the iPhone for doing stuff. You can do this. What's that one? My buddy told me there's an FX one where you can like. There's three of them. There's an FX. There's like one you can make intros and crap. Yeah. The, the, one, uh, the guy who sold me my iPhone, he showed me this one where he took a video of his boss and he dropped a rock on him and crushed the shit out of him. Fucking hilarious. I need that. Oh, yeah. Huh. I need that. I need that app. I'm going to have to find that. But, uh, yeah, we'll get Rex's computer going gradually, and then you'll you'll know when it's working because he'll have more videos going up. I have we'll so go many from there. waiting. Though. Tell me they're stored on your portable. No. <laughs> Dicker. We might have to uh, do some shit. We might have to. I might have to steal this computer and bring it home and put it on the test bench, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. Alrighty, let's roll on home. It's midnight, time to go home, and I might as well do a uh, driving vlog. You know, we're going to make this thing super long, so frig it. Go for broke. Alright, let's roll out. Oh, it looks like Angry Joe is at the gym. Angry Joe is at the gym pumping iron. Yeah, I'm not even sure what the hell's wrong with Rex's computer. That's just dicked. See guys, check it out. No high, uh, no fog lights? Fog lights. No fog lights? Fog lights. They make a difference. Problem is, is the fog lights are aimed right up in the air. I need to figure out how to uh, realign them. Well yeah, back on the topic of Rex's computer, I have no idea what the hell's wrong with it. I'd have to get it over at the house. We'd have to put it up on the bench. And, uh... See what the frig it isn't doing. And if he brings it over to the house and it works fine for me, then it's got to be a loose connection somewhere. Because that's the only thing I could see it being. The jostling and it about fixes the problem. Yup, loose connection all the way. One of these days I need to install a mic near the exhaust and just record the sounds of the awesomeness. Like when I goose it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at those fog lights and see if I can aim them myself because if I could aim them, that'd be so much nicer. So much frickin' nicer. Because I'd love to drive with them on because it would light up the road in front of me. Because right now, all you guys hear like two beams coming out of my car. And I remember that from the old Knight Rider show. The two beams. Oh, frig, I remember the one year I was driving this car and I got pulled over by the cops. I was coming home from work too, so I had an alibi who proved my, my where beings. It's when I used to work weekends. And I'm just driving my car, coming home, and a cop just comes rearing up behind me and kicks on the sirens and pulls me over and he's like, uh, where were you between the hours of 10.30 and 11.30? And I'm like, uh, I was at work. And he's like, bullshit, because your car was seen in the Walmart parking lot doing donuts and driving like an idiot. I'm like, uh, no, that wasn't my car. I was at work and I have an alibi. Would you like to speak with them? He's like, yes, I definitely would like to speak with them. So at the time I was working with Bruce. So I called Bruce up and uh, he's like, what man? I was just about to go to bed. And I'm like, can you talk to uh, the officer who pulled me over and let him, let him know where I was between the hours of 10.30 and 11.30? He's like, you were at work. I'm like, can you let him know? He's like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. So that's the cop. No, and he goes, 
was somebody using your car? I'm like, no. Nobody had my car, dude. It was parked at work. Nobody can drive this car. I'm on Silver Wheel. I show him the insurance. I said, my girlfriend can't even drive this car. He's like, oh. He's like, well, somebody was driving, was doing donuts with your car because it's the only white Camaro I've seen. I said, Camaro? He's like, yeah. I'm like, dude, this is a Firebird Trans Am. He's like, well, oh, you're right. He goes, oh, they look so much alike. I'm like, well, not really. I got poppy uppy headlights and the Camaros have static headlights. But yeah, I guess the body... Like the side panels and everything look pretty much the same in the lines. I said, but if it was a Camaro, I said, it wasn't me. Ends up, I did some research, found out it was my buddy Justin, who has a white Camaro, five speed with a 305 LG4, the carbureted 305, the, uh, the, the gutless wonder, as they call it, because you can actually do some pop-ups to it and get some pretty, uh, pretty interesting performance out of her. The junkyard pop-ups to boot, which is nice. Um, he was the one who was doing donuts in the parking lot, and I got the flack for it, for freak's sakes. So, sure enough, he told, I told him what happened, and he's like, oh my god, dude. I'm like, what? And he goes, that was totally me doing the donuts. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. I'm like, the cops are ready to freaking cuff me and nail me with a fine for it. I said, if Bruce would have answered the phone, I would have been dicked. He's like, oh man, I'm so sorry, you know, I was just having fun, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, don't drive like an asshole. Pretty bad. I'm gonna have to get my car repainted because you're an idiot. Okay. I'm just gonna give her. So yeah, that was friggin' priceless. I get busted because he's a dink. But yeah, I think he's he's got his car out this year, so I should get pulled over by a few more cops for his driving. Expecting it. This is what the uh, fog light's on. You see what I mean? They're aimed way too high. Way, way, way too high. I don't even know if the camera picked that up. Probably not. Yeah, sometimes I'll use my, my fog lights as high beams when cruising on the highway because they're a little bit brighter. <laughs> it's pretty decked. Like, you can probably see here. Maybe not. Any hoozle. I'm almost home, so I'm going to head her home and uh, summarize this all up and then start the editing process, and I should get to bed probably around 8 in the morning. Oh, I should take tomorrow off, but you know me, got to keep on blogging. It's the way we go. So, what the frig is that? Freaking raccoon. Oh no, cat. All right, well, I'll shut her down here, and I'll talk to you guys when we're back home in the office. Peace out. That is quite the moon. Holy shit. <laughs> After a long ass day of vlogging for over two hours straight. Yeah, a beer was needed. But guys, it's getting freaking late. We're gonna shut her down. You guys wanted the two hour vlog? Well, you got her. Two plus hours. Hope you enjoy it. Hope it's not too long. Hope it didn't bore anybody. So uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments section. If you like the video, hit the like button. You know the routine. And until next time, keep on vlogging.